What's up everyone? In this video I'm going to be doing a couple upgrades on my TiVo Tornado. This TiVo Tornado was sent to me by Gearbest. Um, and just the two upgrades that I'm going to do is first I'm going to add a BL Touch and this is the BL Touch Smart. And I'm going to change out two of these wire looms. They use this plastic stuff. I've seen this plastic stuff mostly used on cars. But the problem with the wire loom is every time this bed moves, you can hear the actual wire loom rubbing up against it. And I, I just don't like that. And I, I really hate this plastic stuff. Uh, my work uses it. But uh, we also use this flex stuff. And so that's, that's what I went for. So I went ahead and bought me some uh, quarter inch uh, flex, flexible wire loom. So we're going to use some of this to reduce the noise on movements. Now I'm only going to do the one for the bed and the one for the actual extruder. So replace those two. Um, and that will be all for this, this video right here. Now this video is only going to cover hardware of the BL Touch. My next video, I'm going to actually update the TiVo Tornado to the latest Marlin version and incorporate that uh, BL Touch. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What we will need for this project is a BL Touch, JST connectors. I'm using this, this type of connector, just the extend the leads. Uh, and then one of these connectors, these are three pin socket connectors. Um, this will be for the Z min. And the BL Touch actually comes with some pins. So I'll be using all the pins I can for the BL Touch that it came with. But I will be using this, the, these connectors to actually extend the leads. We will need, this is a JST crimper. And you can do it with needle nose pliers, but I already have these type of crimpers, so I'm going to use these because they're really helpful. Wire cutters. We're actually going to need this mount. I found it on Thingiverse from DFMS Guitar, and I'll leave a link down below uh, where you can download it. And uh, we're going to need a screwdriver. Well, you can use your Allen wrench. I'm using the hex bits from this uh, wow stick to open up the control board and get on uh, and also mount the actual BL touch. So, all right, that should be all the tools that we need. Oh, and heat shrink. I'm going to use heat shrink as well. I'm going to use heat shrink for the wire loom to make it look nice and heat shrink for the actual connectors as well. And you'll see how I'll do it. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my BL Touch to the actual mount. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go ahead, place the screw and washer in first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place the spring in. And then the BL Touch will go on top locked in with this this nut all right so this is how i did it and i and how it's supposed to be done and this is so we can adjust the height of it and still have some tension towards it i'm going to go ahead and now mount it to the actual tivo tornado all right so i'm just going to remove these two screws right here if you're interested to see that this is what the extruder looks like on the tivo tornado and it looks to be a Titan clone as well. So, yeah. All right, it should look just like this. I was able to connect both of these uh, screws on the mount with the BL Touch in place. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get our ribbon wire out and figure out on how long we're going to extend our wire. All right, so I have my wires here. I've already peeled back the five wires I'm going to be using from the ribbon cable, which is black, white, orange, red, and brown. And I'm basically just going to match colors from the BL Touch. Brown being the ground, 
uh, red being power and orange being uh, signal. The BL Touch has a yellow wire, but yellow and orange are close enough. So, and then for the Z Min, we have black and white. And so I'm going to peel these back to the length that I want. So I found my good wire cutters, wire strippers. And basically, I'm just going to take a little bit of the insulation off the wire and I'm going to match the gauge with the uh, numbers that are on the actual strippers. And I just kind of just snip it back like this. And this is a good amount of conductor that you want exposed. Then we're going to take our metal pen right here. And basically how this works, and hopefully you guys can see this, is the insulation is going to be on the first crimp, and the second crimp is going to be the contact. So there's two parts that are getting crimped. The sharp part, and uh, this uh, other like kind of flat part. Those are the two parts that get crimped from the crimpers. And so how we lay this into the crimper, is so on the crimper we have a blank side right here and right here we have on the numbers and AWG so 28 to 24 is what we're using because we're using 28 gauge wire and basically the uh, flat part is going to go towards us And it's going to start clicking and it's going to start locking into place. So we want to look through here and make sure that we're not going too far on the crimp. So we pull it back just a hair. Just enough where it's just crimping the two crimps. Alright, so when you place the wire in, you're just going to make sure there's no frays or anything. And try to get it as centered as possible. And you should really feel the wire, uh, the insulation hit that first barrier. And once you feel that, then you should be good to crimp. And we can see on the other side where we're crimping. And once we're happy where it is, we're going to go ahead and complete the crimp. And that is a perfect crimp right there. So our insulation has been uh, is crimped in and then our uh, con uh, conductor is actually crimped as well. And then you should barely, which we do here, you should barely see your wire hanging out. You just barely want it out. So that's that's a good crimp right there. And then we can go ahead and just slide in our into our actual connector and it should lock into place just like that. Since I made a mistake, I'll show you how to um, disassemble this. Basically, there's a little tab and you just need something small like this small screwdriver and you just dig right underneath the tab. So you should be able to just lift over that uh, tab right there and pull the, the clip out. And this connector is still good to be used again. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put mail pins on all of these. All right, so we have everything crimped. Everything went nice and smoothly. I just like using the crimping tool for one, it's, it's about a $20 tool and the amount of times I've used it, it's paid for itself and it just makes it easy in my opinion. You can use needle nose pliers, but for me it takes a longer time. The crimp doesn't ever look as good as with the crimping tool. I just find it easier. So we're going to go ahead and grab a five pin connector. And we're going to just go ahead and start sliding these pins through. How I'm doing it is I'm putting black and white all the way 
so black to the furthest and then white now how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to match the colors of the actual BL touch and that is brown then red and then uh, it's yellow on the BL touch but I'm using orange so we have our five wires connected in and just I'm just giving everything a nice tug making sure everything is locked into place which it is as you can see that this this kind of popped off real easy so this will be a permanent cable and what I'm going to do to make sure that everything stays permanent is I'm going to actually put heat shrink around this entire connector so here's our heat shrink I'm just going to put it all the way over the connector you could either use a lighter a lighter or some sort of heat gun this is what it looks like and now these wires aren't going to go anywhere before I open up the control box or do anything like that I'm going to go ahead and run my wire loom so basically with this this type of wire loom you're just going to stick the two connectors in and feed it all down I'm going to grab a heat shrink slide it all the way down All right, so really the purpose of this is just to kind of make it look nicer. So just like that. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and replace the remainder of this before I open up the control box. All right, so I went ahead and took off this plastic wire loom. I really hate this stuff. Took off the plastic wire loom for the bed. So it's nice and smooth when that flexible stuff actually rubs against the actual printer and I can't hear it anymore, whereas it would just roll up on there like that. So, took care of that, and I also removed the plastic wire loom up here too with this. Uh, so I've already completed this cable. All I need to do is now put on the actual uh, JST connectors. So I'm gonna put this JST connectors with the three wires and this type of JST connector for the black and white wire. And that way I could just plug everything in and it's more professional that way. All right, so with these socket connectors, this is what they look like. And so we're gonna go ahead and place it in to lock it in. Just maybe, maybe about this much. And then we're going to go ahead and slide it in there. We're going to go ahead and crimp it. So this is a socket that we're going to be using for the Z-Min. And basically the socket will get plugged into this type of connector right here. And so we'll just slide this in. And it's it works the same way as the other JST connector. However, you could tell it's a lot shorter. It's a, it's a stubbier connector. So this one, we have to, these are not the right crimpers for this type of JST connector. But what we can do, and what we're going to do, is we're just going to crimp the insulation on it with these crimpers. And so we're just going to move it down, so just like this, and then our wire is going to go through, and we're just going to crimp the insulation to the actual wire, and then we'll use needle nose pliers to complete the crimp. And you can tell that our insulation is tightly crimped. And so now we're going to need some needle nose and to crimp the actual conductor. Or we can use our wire strippers so it's just good enough and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it fits in the connector all right so yep so now it clicked into place just like this I'm not sure the order of the wire yet I just quickly tested this but these ones if you want to take the wire out of this type of JST connector 
Again, you're going to need a small object like that screwdriver or something small to kind of poke at the uh, pin. And then you just release it like that. There's a little tab on it that you got to just press so then uh, it releases. But yeah, so these connectors are for this JST. So now we can go ahead and open up our box. All it is is these two screws on the bottom need to be removed. Two screws on this bottom need to be removed. And then the two screws on top of here need to be removed. All right. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and put five volts, the center one, all the way to the right. We're going to now put ground in the center. And this orange wire is our signal. And we're going to put that all the way to the left. What we're going to do is just run it through where all these other wires are. Here, in the center one, it's the servo pins. So the one closest to this big chip right here, this is 5 volts. The center is ground, and the farthest, uh, the one towards us, is um, signal. So how we have it is our 5 volts, our ground, and our signal. So we are matched with it. So we're able just to plug this right down. And over here, on this farthest one down, is Z minus Z min. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. All right, so how this connector will be pinned out is our ground wire will be in the center part of this JSD connector. So our Z min wire will actually go to the right of the ground wire when our pins on this JST connector are facing up. So just go in just like this. So we can see our white wire is closest to, to us and our ground wire is right in the center. And I went ahead and zip tied it uh, right on the rest of the wiring. So let's go ahead and close it up, uh, test. All right, so we have no code for the BL Touch, but we can turn it on and just see if the lights turn on. So, all right, we have lights and the servos are working properly. All right, so that concludes this video. So just a brief summary of what we did. We changed the plastic wire loom from the X axis and the Y axis to a flex wire loom. Uh, it's just better to work with in my opinion and we also added a BL touch as well and this video was just on the hardware portion of that um, I will be coming out with a part two and that will be Marlin 1.18 and in, I'll incorporate the BL touch as well so hopefully I can get that video out here soon um, so yeah, if this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for your support and thank you for watching.